We are back from Africa and have brought a lot of data with us. For us, this means off to post-production. In this episode of the Color Class Namibia, I will show you which steps we have to take and what we should pay attention to. The first step we have to take when we go into post-production is data management. We have brought a lot of data with us on the G-Speed shuttle from G-Technology, our SSD storage. Let's take a look at it now. We have created two folders on our SSD storage. One is the edit folder and the other is the source folder. We have stored everything that is needed for editing in the edit folder. The Premiere Pro projects that are currently in there, we have already created on the shoot to properly manage the material. In the second folder, the source folder, there again are three folders in which we have stored our raw material which we brought with us from the shoot. That means we have a footage folder. The individual shooting days are then in this footage folder. The whole thing is sorted by camera, here also with the naming, which camera was what and what purpose it had. And then there are the individual memory cards. A little tip that I still have for you is, if you have copied the data, you can still see that here, we have named our data individually. In this case, we took the project name, CCN stands for Color Class Namibia, then we said there was a shooting day 1, from shooting day 1 there is a camera B, and there is a memory card 1 in there. And at the end, the original file name from the camera is applied again. What this gives us is that you have an individual name for each file that is in your project. And should we now go ahead and take the data off our SSD storage, for example, on an external hard drive or an archive storage, Premiere still knows what exact file it has to look for. Let's take a look at the whole thing in our Premiere Pro project. Here we have structured the whole topic identically. This means that all the edit files are in the edit folder. In this case, they are the sequences. They are also well sorted according to each episode that we now produce for the color class. In addition, we have our source folder. Our source folder then contains all the data that we need to cut the finished film. The first step we take in Premiere is to create a sequence in which we put all the files. I've already prepared that here. And the point of this file is that we can completely look through the entire clips that we have produced. That means every single day of shooting, every single clip is looked at once and watched to see if it can make it into the finished cut. That means it's just sorting out and reviewing the raw material we brought back from Africa. Now that we have looked through all of our files, it is time to fine-tune the actual episode. That's where I always start with the music, because music is super important to me. It gives us the mood and the pace of the edit, and is always the reference to which I orient myself. We get our music from Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is a label that provides music for YouTube videos. We can work through the library here and look for the pieces of music that we need for our film. Something I particularly like about Epidemic Sound is the fact that they provide us with stems. These are individual parts of the music, which I can then edit individually in my sequence. I can choose if I want to hear the melody now, if I want to have the drums included, or if I want to hear the song completely. Now that we have completed all the preparations, we can start editing of our actual film. When I start editing now, I make sure that each picture takes us forward in the story. That means, look at each picture, whether it has added value for the story and whether it drives the story forward. The last tip I have for you is to make your sound and color corrections at the very end. In the beginning, it's just a matter of getting a proper picture arrangement. What can happen is, when you are editing, that you still have to exchange certain pictures that you have cut into the sequence. It would be a shame if you did the work beforehand and graded each picture immediately if it was exchanged at the back. That means, always do color and sound corrections at the very end, when the film is actually ready. I would say that the film is done. And for you to get an idea of what the scene looks like at the very end, let's have a look. <laughs> 